Gordon, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I am really thrilled to have you here because I know I've said this to you before, but for all my listeners that are listening, I feel like Gordon is kind of me in another seven years time. And he's so forward thinking and so um, so kind of breaking boundaries with new things. that I feel like he's always going to be seven years ahead. I'm never going to catch you up, Gordon. Um, but I'm going to explain a minute why you are me in seven years time. But first of all, I just want to say hi and thank you for joining me. It's an absolute pleasure. Deborah, um, and the last time we were going to do this podcast interview, by the way, I was just massively ill and I would have been of no use to anyone. So no, it's great that we've um, finally managed to hook up, etc. But yeah, thanks for having me. It's a, it's a delight and I'm really looking forward to it. Great. Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you. And I mean, I'll explain now why I, I say you're me in seven years time. So I first came across you at um, Nick James Expert Empires. And in fact, I think Nick was talking about you and you jumped up in the audience and you started to speak um, and explained that you are a business mentor and coach for those people running martial arts businesses. And instantly I was like, I need to speak to that man. <laughs> like I need to track him down and speak to him. And in fact, that's exactly what I did. I think I came and uh, stalked you at the drinks party, had a lovely chat, and you've just been hugely helpful to me ever since because you've kind of, as I say, you started on this journey mentoring and coaching um, people running martial arts businesses which let's face it is not that different in terms of, um, you know, what they do and what my, my lovely people do. Um, how did you start, how did you go from being um, owning a martial arts school and just being a business owner to a coach and a mentor? What a wonderful question. Um, well, like, first of all, it's, everything's a journey and everyone thinks it just pops in there. Like with anything, don't they? It's all right for you, et cetera. But the reality is there's always a story, there's always a journey, there's always a, 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 a um, you know, a constant learning and evolution of self. And, you know, I, I've been running martial arts schools for a long time, like I've martial arts schools for over two decades. And um, I, you know, in 2000 and, oh, 2008, um, I lost my home trying to build a martial arts school. It was a really tough time, you know, when you got a, mm-hmm move out of a home that you built for 10 years um, and move into a very cheap property. And, you know, you're eating pasta and tomato sauce and sprinkling cheese on so it it tasted okay. Uh, It was pretty down time for me. And um, I was at a crossroads in my life. You know, the life was very simple. I'm either going to lose my martial arts business as well with a little, little, very tiny full-time facility. It was, I was massively in debt and massively in a mess personally and um, and I was I didn't know any way out really until I got an email through talking about helping me run my martial arts school and coaching me I was like okay what's this I jumped on a call had a few conversations and the conversation I'm ready to go he says great give me three thousand pounds for three months and I nearly vomited <laughs> and the reason I did is because like well I've got 25 pound a week to live on for food with me and my family and I can't afford this I was like I then put the phone down thinking, I've got to do something different. And I sold some stuff from my garage that we had, some little bits and pieces, and managed to, I don't know how I did it, pay this £3,000. And, you know, at that point in time, it was like, I've got to do something. Um, so I was, I was all in, um, completely remodeled my business. And in two and a half months, we turned it from a £2,800 a month business to over £10,000 a month. It was unbelievable. It was like, wow. wow. We tripled the business. And there was a very pivotal moment for me um, Deborah and all listeners and it's very simple I learned something very simple from that whole two and a half months it wasn't that I can't it's that I hadn't learned to yet and that was massive it was like ah, okay all I need to do is learn how to and I just went on this massive massive journey and continue today of learning and growing and evolving and spent well, at least three hundred thousand pounds at least in coaches mentors masterminds etc um, I had a life coach for five years, breaking the barriers, deep NLP regression therapy, working on myself, working on who I was, breaking all that down and um, and learning about marketing and learning about systems, processes and learning how to be a better version of myself. And I, through that journey has been life transformational for me and took me on a journey in 
Uh, about eight years ago, I was starting to look for something different. I built a highly successful martial arts school and I loved it. And I was like, you know what? I want to do something different. So I, I decided to have a look at property educational courses. And I went into learning property education, a company called Progressive with Rob Moore. And I was there, I was learning all this stuff. And it was this, one of the last courses I had invested like, I don't know, 10 grand over these courses, right? And I was like, yeah, I'm going to do property. And all of a sudden, I remember a guy called Paul Preston. He was doing this graph of they built this property portfolio and all of a sudden this spike of reaching people and business growth. And it was teaching people how to build, how to how to then, um, you know, have the property portfolio. So, well, they've got this training company. And immediately I went, martial arts business mastery. I remember, I remember, I remember sitting in the audience going, it just came from nowhere. And I was like, right. And I remember in one of us, someone had talked about live video. I was like, I'm on Facebook. What's this Facebook there? Okay, so I was using it a little bit. I was like, okay, live video. Oh, yeah, it does it. This is live video. Okay. So I walked out of that into the street and just did a live video and said, if you're a martial arts instructor, here's what I, you know, I've built a martial arts school, listen to this. And just started rabbiting on this live video. I've never done it before, but I've never done it before ever. And I was like, right, and I did it again and again and then built up, uh, and then I created a little group called Martial Arts Business Mastery, Facebook group. No one was doing this kind of thing. And then the people were coming in now, I was just started building, uh, and uh, I was just giving, giving to the martial arts world because I felt the pain previously of losing my health. And it just went literally from this Facebook group to, I remember doing my first course, did my first course for £97. I remember doing that. And then just got people in a room and, and it just grew and grew. And I then I did my one-to-one -one mentoring and that that I was oversubscribed. And then I was like, oh, and then I met Mick, Nick James and just went on this mad crusade, like of like, just like helping people and building masterminds and, events and coaching business and yeah and it's brought me to where i am today which i'm thankful for every day deborah every day yeah. i know and i know that you are very thankful and you're someone that really takes gratitude very seriously um but you know listening to you anyone that's listened to previous episodes of my podcast or has seen me on stage or knows my story it's actually quite freaky that we have such similar stories like because I mean, I'm grateful for the fact that I probably didn't get to quite the, set, the same stage that you were at in terms of, you know, the financial um, challenges that you were under and, and where you were. But I got, you know, not far off. You know, at one stage I was trying to work out whether actually going bankrupt would be better than trying to pull myself out of all the debt. And it's from, you know, I love the saying, from the deepest wound comes the greatest growth. Okay. Because like we all grow from the hardest times in our life. We grow the most through the hardest times in our life. And I went and found myself a business coach, put down, I think it was about £600 a month that I was paying. When I wasn't earning anywhere near that in my business, we had to use the last little bit of our savings. You know, my school was failing. I was in a you know, very similar situation to where you were. And I invested because I knew if I put my last penny into it, I had to make it work. Mm -hmm. Like there was no well, I'll, tack, I'll, you know, I'll dabble over here and I'll have a little play with this. Like this was everything. And if this didn't work, I, I felt like I had nowhere left to go. And it's like from there, I then rebuilt my business, same sort of thing. Um, anyway, anyway, went on the same, pretty much exact same journey. So anyone listening, you can see now why I say this is, you know, this is me like a few years ago. Um, and it's just hugely empowering to hear somebody else that says it started off because you just wanted to help other people from not going into that same painful place that you were in. Mm. Yeah, and, and and it really did. And by the way, I never expected it to be the size it is now, and where it's been. And I've written a book on. <laughs> I've written a couple of books now. Um, I would never have thought I'd have wrote, written a book. By the way, never ever in a million years. And uh, the business of martial arts has been read globally. We ship it all over the world, uh, which is you know hugely unbelievable to me sometimes. The reviews that we get, you know. And also, but more importantly, the lives that we get to get the change every single day, like yourself, like it's so important. And, you know, it, it's, do you know what? It's where I feel most alive. It's where I feel like um, I, I'm living is where I'm giving. It, I feel like um, it's a purpose. And 
I'm always, I'm just so thankful for the journey because it, you know, being able to give back to other people is one of the greatest gifts in the world, right? It's just unbelievable. So yeah, I'm very pleased to be on this journey for sure. And long may it continue. Yeah, absolutely. And the thing is, what I love is a lot of people feel that once they've found their purpose and they have their passion, that that has to be given away for free. That as soon as you start charging for that or earning great money from it, then that's something that you have to be ashamed of. And I love the fact that both you and I have actually learned, you know, you can take back from this giving. Like It's okay to end up with a wonderful lifestyle and freedom of choices and everything for yourself as a result of giving. Some people I know in the dance industry, I'm sure it's the same, feel like you're teaching kids, it's your passion, you're there, you want to help change their little lives. So, you know, you should, you sh- shouldn't, it shouldn't be about the money. But of course, it's not, is it? Uh, I could go into a whole uh, conversation, which we probably will now. Um, you're devaluing yourself, you're de- devaluing the world, the world needs. Like everything is of value, right? There's an exchange of value. Like, I, by the way, the reason I can say this is because I used to wear a badge of honour that we, we at the, I remember one time people pay nine pound a week for five classes a week. I, I used to think that was good, but actually it was doing a disservice because what it, what it meant was I lost my martial arts school. What it meant was I couldn't reinvest. What it meant was I couldn't invest in staffing and team and facility and help my business grow and me to invest in my mentorships and me to learn and become a better human being, to be a better leader, etc. It's your duty and obligation to earn as much money as you can by changing as many lives as you can. That's what I believe. And I think that, you know, this whole thing, because all it is is money beliefs. Like where we, where, if you, you break it all down, if people, it's just, you can help so many more people when you earn a good living because you value yourself higher. When you, you can help as many people as you want. I love, I, I give on a daily basis. You know, if people, some of the things that I do, I, that's what I love doing. And I'm sure I'm not the only person. I bet there's loads of people. Most people want to give. And that's it. I'm not, definitely not unique. Um, but you've also got to value yourself in the right areas because I give unconditionally, of course. But when there's an exchange of service, an exchange of value, actually what's interesting is people take it more serious. I used to think if you give things away for free, and that's a good thing. No, it's not because they don't value it then. They don't value it. People value what they pay for. And I always say, if they pay, they play. You know, it's very simple. And as business owners, um, it's more important than ever that you make money in your business while changing as many lives as you can. Because here's the thing, you can charge, and this is I work a lot with martial arts school owners. Uh, I've got martial arts school owners who charge anything from £20 a month for two classes a week, uh, and, and we change their mindset, up to people who pay £149 a week for twice a week. £97 a week a month for twice a week. And you know the only difference, not the better martial artist, not their more savvy, etc. is their mindset around money and their mindset around the value that they provide and the value for themselves. And that's the biggest difference. It's just about your exchange of value. Now, all of this mindset comes from your past, um, your past, uh, experiences, you know, um, I got, I heard this the other day and I got to share it with you. Um, if you're listening in here and I will share this because I think it's really powerful, um, what what shoes did you wear at school and how did it make you feel? Then you'll realize where your money beliefs coming from. Because if you were lack of, if you have a lack of, you'd have probably not ha- had had the cheaper cheaper trainers. You'd have probably had the trainers that your mom couldn't dad could afford. The same as me, that was right. If you are a person who could have everything, guess what? You're but you have an abundance around money. It's just, it's a very very interesting analogy, isn't it? And um, you know, then beliefs are formed from your childhood, but they're not who you are because you're born abundant you're born with abundance pure abundance and what we learn is from our childhood these money beliefs it could be I was very challenged my mom was working three or four jobs so was my dad and they were just delivering newspapers as well so we could eat as well so it was really tough for them and we still didn't have a lot of money so I had a lot of money beliefs that I've had to work on by the way Deborah so if you're listening in here it's not who you are it's what you've learned to be you are le- like learn around that. And um, there's a great, have you re- read the book, by the way, Get Rich Lucky Bitch? What a book that is. What an amazing book. And I'm sure a lot of your listeners have or will be listening to it. It's an amazing book. And 
um, it's very powerful about getting over their money beliefs because it's only what you've inherited. It's not who you are. And the reason for that is the world loves um, exchange of value, loves the, the money to keep moving backwards and forwards. Because if you don't have that, you don't have economy, right? And the more you value yourself, the more people will value you. And the more they value you, the more they value what you do and et cetera. And it's, it's, very, it's a fascinating subject. Um, in the martial arts industry, it's interesting. It might be the same in the dance area. Um, but in the martial arts, I've never seen an industry like it where the, great, the, best, um, the best people in their field earn the least amount of money. And the only reason for that is crazy, right? The best in their field earn the least amount of money. And the reason yeah. for that is their own beliefs. Well, you should give it away. You shouldn't charge for it, etc. But what they're doing is they're devaluing what it is they do, you know? So it's a fascinating um, uh, concept, isn't it? And actually, it's just a belief you formed from, from your childhood. That's it. Yeah, 100%. And I tell everybody about that book, by the way. So if you haven't read it, Get Rich, Lucky Bitch by Denise Duffield Thomas, who I actually interviewed on my podcast um, a few months ago. So you can go back and have a little listen to that because she comes from quite a strong dance and performing arts background, actually. Um, and I think you and I are going to be lucky enough to see her on stage in March next year because she's coming over to the UK. So yeah, we're looking forward to that. But a hundred percent, like I just back up everything and it's of no real surprise to me that it's the same for you guys in the martial arts industry yeah. as it is for us. Like what you're saying is, you know, the same, the same as that I'm telling everybody in my industry all the time. And I think I love what you said about, you know, earn as much as you can for helping as many people as you can, like, and do it unconditionally without guilt, because like you said, the less, the less you charge, the less people don't value what you're giving. And I had someone just the other day, actually, that was talking to me about commitment. You can't get the parents to commit. They, you know, they won't sign up for things. They're turning up some weeks, not the others. And I had to try and explain, this is probably down to your fee structures. It's probably down to what you're charging. And when I went into it, of course, she was charging, you know, really low prices. And so there's a whole, <laughs> whole load of other stuff to unpick as a coach before we can sort out the parent commitment. Because like you say, you've got to backtrack and find out where all this stuff's coming from, haven't you? 100%. Like I teach people, like, unless you believe they won't, it's simple as that. 85% of communication is nonverbal. It doesn't matter what you what what you price. It's like if you say if you believe it's forty pound a month, they will pay that. If you believe it's ninety pound a month, they will pay that because they're not coming to you because of what you charge. They're coming to you for what you give. You know, it's what you what what value, what experience you create. So when you're around this subject, it's really important as human beings that you know you've got to know your value. Um, I said to martial arts instructors, you've got to look at the lives that you change, the life skills that we have, the impact that you have, the, the, the taking that child from being bullied to black belt, you know, uh, you know, whether it's confidence, whether it's weight loss, whatever that is, that's the value. And when people come, as long as you understand this, and this is crucial, like this all comes right the way back to your marketing. It comes right all the way back to how your awareness marketing, like you've got to understand is what message you're putting out there, number one. And when you're having a conversation with them, what do they really want for their children? What are they, and it, you know, dance will be the same as martial arts. Like they may be the builder confidence or they've got an aspiration or they're, you know, they may be uncoordinated. What is the reason? What's the real reason? How important is it to them? Because all of a sudden then, once you know that and you dial into that, it, it's irrelevant what it is because it's so bloody cheap, excuse me, but it's so cheap compared to the results and the value they're going to get. The, the challenge is, do you believe that? Yeah, absolutely. And the biggest problem is they'll pay twice as much to go and have a piano lesson or to go and do certain other children's activities. Mm -hmm. Why do we feel that they won't pay that for our activities? And, you know, so I think it's definitely, like you said, it's a massive money mindset, but I don't even think that it's a personal one. I think it's an industry-based one. And it's the same for yours by the sounds of things. It, it, it is. And that's why you have to educate yourself. It's massively important that you go on a because here's the thing, like you'll be able to stand out from the crowd as well. When you understand this and your energy is abundant, your energy is value, and that comes out before before you even 
you know, I, I say the, the pitch is I have three elements that I teach. First of all, it's, it's, it's Matt Alwell's concept with the serve sale close. You know, you've got to realize that you're brilliant at selling and they go, no, I'm not. You are the sale because the serving element is the prospecting, is the nurturing, is to find out who they are, what they want, what they're looking for. The selling is the experience. So the selling is you in the dance studio, is you as you meet and greet them, that experience that they have, that's the sale. And at the end, it's like, okay, so you wanted this, which one are you going for? Like, let's get you started. And, and, and it is that simple. And, but if you don't, when you're going to do your close element, if you don't believe that the value is so valuable, it outweighs that cost, you will always go, oh, they're not going to be able to afford it. It's just your stuff. So one of the ways that you can break this, by the way, is be like, I find this a lot and I'm sure you do. You need to learn to be okay being sold to. And, and the reason why I say that is you should be okay with other businesses, what they charge. You should go into and when when someone says, um, you know, you go in and the meal's this much, you go, amazing. You don't go, oh, how much is it? And you're checking everything because that's what you're going to attract as a person. So it's really important that you retrain yourself because when you're less sales resistant, you'll be less sales resistant, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And as a person, your energy and, um, you know, being, being a leader is all about that. And there's a massive learning in this subject, huge, because it'll be the same in your industry. It, it's, you know, you want to raise the standard of an industry, of course, but to raise any standard of an industry, you've got to raise your fees. You've got to be, you've got to live, you know, live and breathe at a different level. Cause then you can reinvest in the infrastructure, in, reinvest in better facilities, better teams, better, um, equipment, all these wonderful things that we can do. But you can't if you're only earning just enough. Um, and, and this comes from a lack of very often, um, which is societal, right? Society is like, okay, you know, um, I've got some great, great news for all of your listeners, by the way. Um, congratulations. You've mastered survival. So you never, you can either survive playing in this area or survive playing in the abundant area, wherever you want. You're going to survive anyway. You've mastered it. You have nailed it. So you will never ever sink. You will always survive in some way. So you've mastered that. So very often people play in a survival mechanism in money. So they'll go, well, here, I've just about, you're always just about pay your rent, always just about pay your things, et cetera, anything else. But I guarantee most of you pay yourself last. I guarantee that happens. Uh, and pay yourself first, make yourself abundant. Then you'll start to think differently about it. So it's just some of my sh sharing there that, I, that I've seen. So I thought I would just share with you guys today the um, planners that I have produced for dance school owners because these are flying out of Amazon like hotcakes. And if you don't have yours yet, then all you have to do is pop to Amazon and type into the search Deborah Laws and all three books will come up. So the ultimate dance business planner I designed for you so that you had a little bit of a Deborah on your desktop. <laughs> the planners are full of business training, tips, motivational quotes, uh, things to do at the start of the month, things to do at the end of the month, ways in which you can plan out your marketing and your retention. And they are selling all over the world. So go to Amazon, grab your number one best-selling ultimate dance business planner and enjoy mapping out the growth for your studio. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. And something that kind of came to mind there as you were talking, like you and I share the same business coach. And one of the things that he says is a successful business person is successful based on their ability to manage their mental and emotional state. Mm -hmm. And so money mindset is one of those mental and emotional states that is going to cause success or not such great success. What other areas of mindset do you often find are pivotal in terms of whether someone's going to be successful or not? Actually, you've got to believe. No, you've got to, you've got to believe your, you've got to, <laughs> belief is everything. Um, and it's a mantra, right? Okay. It's all it is a mantra. You know, if you believe 
you are, you know, if you believe August is a bad month for dance, your wish is my command. <laughs> yeah. if you believe it's going to be a great month, your wish is my command. You are a genie. You must remember you're the creator. Every single day that you're alive, you create it through your thoughts and feelings. And once you understand that as a human being, you need to say, okay, what's my self-talk? What's my story? You know, the most important story is the one you tell yourself every single day. Mm-hmm. The challenge is most of it is a nightmare. <laughs> most of it is like, it is like, it's so bad. Like you, you listen to most people's story about themselves. You know, they're world champions at knocking themselves down. Mm-hmm. They are phenomenally good at finding what's got wrong with them. They're phenomenally telling themselves they can't. But that's not the truth. It's just a lie. You're lying to yourself. The reality is you can do, be, and become anything that you choose with action, with thought and action. The, the, the crazy thing is most people's mantra never changes. So what you've got to be is to change that thought process, to change your mindset, you've got to change the language. You've got to change the narrative. You've got to change the story. And anyone could do that. Anyone could do that. You know, you when you look at hear me now on the podcast, you're talking to a, a guy um, pre coaching, etc. Used to hate himself, didn't love himself. And in fact, I didn't want to be here. Hated my name, hated everything about it. I used to think there was something different about me because the story I told myself, right? So I had to go through personal development, lots and lots of stuff, business coaching, life coaching, etc. Tony Robbins, immersion. It's like, actually, no, no, no. I, I, I am good enough. Yes, I can. And once you change that story, Everything changes. Like you, like you are the genie, right? You are, you are the person. You're the creator, and that's really powerful. When you're a business owner, it's so important you work, work harder on yourself than you do on your business. Like most people get, right, you need to work hard on your business. No, you need to work hard on yourself. You need to be work, because you're the you are the captain of your ship. You know, if you you got to catch yourself and stop yourself bullying yourself. You've got to catch yourself every time you say something negative. You've got to catch yourself when you're putting yourself down. And you've got to reframe that and start to change the narrative. That's where you're going to make a difference. Most people work hard on their business, so they want to go and learn how to do Facebook ads, and they still are not succeeding. Why? Because their belief is not there. I've tasted this so many times, by the way, Deborah. It's so funny. Like the amount I can, I've, I'm, I'm really good at Facebook ads. It's like one of the things I, I basically, I wrote the book on Facebook ads for martial arts school. It, we, no one was doing it. We were creating great copy, great image. Like we were just disrupting this industry. People going, what the hell is this Facebook marketing? We want the innovators in the UK. And I, I can, I'm really good with Facebook ad copy and creation. I can give it to two schools, same demographic, same area. Right? This person, I've tested it so many times. This person doesn't believe because oh, I'll just try it. I'll see how it goes. Same ad spend, same, and put, give it to another person who goes, this is going to work. It's coming from Gordon. It's going to work like this. Guess what? The person who believes it, it works brilliantly for this one. It doesn't. And people go, and I've done this multiple times. And people say, wow, that's a load of work. It must have been, look, no, not when you've done it 10, 20 different times, the same thing. It all comes down from your energy and belief. It's so important. So, oh, so. Yes. Absolutely. 100%. Hallelujah. Because the, the universe listens. <laughs> Generally, but genuinely believe the universe listens. I have a sign above my door. I'm looking at it right now um, that I had made, which says, she believed she could, so she did. And I have it on my screensaver on my phone. It's on my computer. So if any of you are feeling, actually, I think this is a little bit me, Gordon's talking to me. And like, how do I start turning myself around and having much more of an abundant, positive mindset? Like if you find it difficult, just put it in front of yourself so that you read it, you see it, but a post-it note, you know, I encourage my members to, you know, write post affirmation, post-it notes and stick them all around the house, have them on the bathroom cabinet, have it on your sign in your, in your office. Let it be the first thing when you open your business planner in the morning, like start reading it, telling yourself it's true. And you can soon start to turn this stuff around. <laughs> aren't you? Yeah, I always say, you say it often enough, you start to believe it, right? Yeah. <laughs> It's like, oh, the thing is, you believe it the other way, right? So you believe all the negative stuff. You just taught yourself to say it so many times, right? What you got to do is you got to say it the other way, right? If you say it often enough, you start to believe it. Um, talking about things right now is a great way to change your money beliefs. If you are in a lack of, it's very simple. Put money around your house. Like, check this out. This will blow your mind, right? So 
when we had nothing and we started to build our business again, I was like, okay. And I learned this because I read lots of books and stuff. I was like, right, okay. I'm going to start putting money inside. So I started putting tens, twenties, etc. around the house, hide them in drawers, put them up in the, in the, um, in the, the wardrobe and um, have different accounts and have like a hundred pound here, a thousand pound over here. And all of a sudden I have money and now money was everywhere. So now I started to create this thing. Well, there's money I didn't even know. So unconsciously, because you're unconscious, you driver, I was, I was in abundance. And he checked this out. I remember one day I found fifteen thousand pound in cash. I forgot I got it. It was in the right up in the back of the uh, wardrobe when we started to take it down. I was like, holy what? Unbelievable, <laughs> right? It's like no way. Where did that come from, right? Unbelievable. And and so the power of that is I always share that because it's such a powerful way because. See, you're unconscious as your driver. You've got your mushin, which means no mind, and you've got your front row here, which is your conscious. The biggest problem is, the biggest challenge is, you all, most people live in their front, front part of their brain. They're conscious, which is their thinking brain. You know, I think it's Tony Robbins says, in your head, you're dead. You're damn right, right? So this thinking brain is so, like, it, it messes everything, everything up. Because if you as a human being didn't think, what would you be? It's an interesting one. What could you do? It's unbelievable, right? So your unconscious brain, you got to take it from thought brain to unconscious. And the way you do that is repetition. Same with dance moves, right? So Deborah can dance without thinking. That's her, that's her motion, right? Means no mind. So you can do this too. But what you've got to do is you've got to first take it to your, your action here. You've got to really think about it to change. So I, I use three, it's very simple. AAA every day is what I work from. Very simple. You've got have awareness. So let me just step back. Okay, I'm aware of it. Great. I accept it. I'm good. I can own that. Now I'm going to accelerate it. I'm going to take a different action. I'm AAA every day. And what it does, it allows you to go, okay, I'm aware of it. Ah, that's where I'm at. Great. It's okay. I accept it. That's where I am. Now let me make a different action to change right? Let me be f- focused on it. That's how you create change. It's very simple. You can go into NLP and stuff, but the reality is it's AAA and that's how you make a shift. But most people don't, they start with awareness, but then they don't, they kind of accept it, but then they don't take action. It's the last part to create change. Uh, and you can do that. And, and that whether it's mindset, whether it's money beliefs, whether it's your business, you know, I bet most of you listening right now have got one or two or three things that you know you should be doing that you're not doing. It's simple, right? Everyone does. And all you've got to do is go, okay, I need, I'm aware of it. I need to accept it. But now I need to take a different action to get a different result. So, yeah, for me, mindset is a constant and never-ending challenge, right? But you've got to work on it every day harder than you do in your business. Hundred percent. And the thing is, you started to talk about how the mindset then affects the strategy. You know, the taking the action, which is great because I could talk mindset all day, <laughs> all day and all night. Um, but in terms of some of the more strategic things, I'd love to pick your brains a little bit today because obviously, again, like we'd identified earlier, not that dissimilar running a martial arts school to a dance school. Um, what would you say if you were to, let, let's let's go with, I have five things that I often teach my clients. Um, strategy, team, attraction, retention, and systems. I'd love to pick your brains with one thing in each of those areas. So what is one of the key strategies that you encourage your clients to do to help grow their business? Well, you've got to have a plan, right? Like, so you've got to know what you want. You know, the great strategy is knowing, Right, so you got to know what you want. Like, this sounds really basic, but you want. But how many people are going like? So, what's your what is your vision? What's your metrics? What's your data? What are you going for? And people don't know. I'd like to have more members. What does that look like? Give me a figure. Um, I'd like to build a team. What does that look like? Give me a figure. Let me know what that looks like. So, very, very honestly, like honestly, people don't really. They're, they're in their head, but they haven't got this clear vision. And they've got to know what it is on a daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, yearly, five yearly, 10 yearly. You've got to make sure that you are absolutely clear on what that looks like and how exciting that is. So my number one is really is vision. Like what is the vision and how clear is it? I don't know if it's the same with you, um, 
Deborah, but for me, people think they've got a vision and it's so diluted, like it's so not clear. It's not, you know, they don't know. They don't really know. It's just like, I'd like to say, what do you want to do? I don't really know. I just think it'd be a great idea or I just want more money. What money do you want? What do you want to do? So this clarity around the vision and what I mean by that is the strategy of vision, mission, et cetera, why you do what you do, why your martial art, why your dance school exists, et cetera, is more important than anything. So for me, because I believe that's the driving force, you see, because I think the how in that is easy. I don't, you can learn how to do Facebook ads. You can learn how to do, you can learn from Deborah. But if you are not absolutely, your strategy is not clearly defined step by step, how one thing leads to another, how that leads to that, to the greater purpose, you ain't ever getting there. You'll always hold back and you, you'll create the excuses and the reasons and you'll be lazy and you'll be tired and, you know, all this kind of stuff. So for me, strategy is about vision. It's about yeah. absolute clarity. Um, and it never stops revisiting that, the strategy every single day, you know, because the reality is like when you start something new, I did this today in, a, in my franchise training day um, where they go, oh, um, they're, um, when they start something new, like the, the, the motivation is right peak, right up here. It's right at the top. They've only been it a little time and they're like, they're right up here. Then over time, it starts to deplete. Their motivation goes and it goes and it dips. And then they're not as proactive. They're not doing the things they did at the start. They, um, they, they lie to themselves. They're not on it. It's true, right? Oh, yeah, I am doing the work, but the, yeah, they're doing a bit. And they're not doing as much as they say they are. And, you know, they're marketing. They're making excuses. They're below the line, you know. And, all, and then they wonder why they're not getting the results. It's very simple. You're getting exactly what you deserve. And I'm sorry if that hurts, but you're getting exactly what you deserve from the actions that you're taking. And that may hurt some of you. I'm a straight to the point coach. The reality is, it's just a reflection. Your results are a reflection of your actual activity. It might be that you're working hard, but not working smart. It might be that you're not doing the work at all. Maybe that you're lying to yourself. And the reason I share that is because when you first start a business, you're locked on, you've got a vision, you know what it looks like, you're clear, you're excited, you're passionate, you're motivated. But then over time, you lose that newness and you go into this looseness and, oh, yeah, I can't write. And then you can start making excuses. And that's why you've got to work harder on yourself than anything else. So your job is every single day to re realign with your vision and your mission and your purpose. Why does my dance school exist? What is the purpose of me? Why am I here? What lies am I changing? So you can, every single day is a new day. And so one of the greatest strategies I, I have for self is, you know what, Deborah? Every single day, I get well excited about going to sleep. Like you would not believe. Man, like I am so excited about going to bed for one simple reason. I learned this years ago from an incredible coach. And I just remember, so simple. Every day you get to close your eyes, fall asleep and draw a line in the stand, sand, step over into your new life. Like, wow. I was like, wow. So every single day is a new day. It's a new, literally a new chapter. You don't have to bring yesterday into today. You can literally live today as if it was your first day. Like if everyone did that, if every time your business was your first day, what would you do? What a great strategy. Because now you're not going about the how, you just let's go, you've got the motivation. So that's what I think. That's that's, that's something to, to focus on as a business owner. That actually makes life really exciting. Like <laughs> every day you wake up, it's a brand new you and a brand new life and a brand new day. <laughs> It is one of the most empowering things you can ever do as a human being. And you know what's interesting? Every human being can do this on the planet. They can choose to let go of the past, live in the present, and get excited about the future. But they hold on to yesterday. They hold on to the last week. Last minute, they hold on to this drama and the emotion, and they take it into the... And it's just Groundhog Day. It's in the film Groundhog Day. It's the same thing. Let it, you've got to let it go to grow. So every day, let it go to grow. Let it go, be excited and go, right, I get to start a fresh day every day. How cool is that? That's my strategy. Right. Absolutely love that. And um, that would have been a great way to finish the podcast, but I've got so many other questions. <laughs> so I'm just going to okay. keep going with all this greatness. <laughs> um, okay, so one strategy around team. Go best on. advice you can give, best advice around managing a team. First of all, sing singly. 
the most important skill set to learn if you want freedom and expansion. If I was to go back without doubt, Deborah, I've been in martial arts business now 25 years. If I was to go back with the knowledge, and by the way, this is the great thing, like for all of you right now, I'd get excited because asset is in wisdom. The asset is the wisdom, like it's the greatest asset you have is the wisdom you've already gained. Like if, if I, if any of you now stop and think, if you were to start your biz, dance business again, how would you do it? And most if I said to Deborah, if you're going to start this dance business lab again, how, and she would absolutely do it differently because she's got a new learning, right? If you start a dance school again, do it completely different. You do it faster because you've got more wisdom. Yeah, you know what to do, etc. So for me, I'm like, I would hire early. Like we do this now, by the way. So uh, we were in a franchise company and um, we've had this franchise company. I mean, we only l- launched it like right, first it was January this year. We've got six franchises and um, we're, we're scaling that up to 20 franchises next year. And part of the franchise company is, um, you know, we've got, we're learning lots. I don't know how to run franchises. I'm just building franchises, like top tip, like don't work out, like do it and work it out, right? So one of that is like, I'm like, yeah, we've got to hire early. So we're hiring someone at like, I think it's 25, 30,000 pound a year. And it makes no sense. Most people would not do it in the business because like, no, no, we need them now because you need them to get where you want to get to. So the biggest tip, hire when like hire before you need it. And what I mean by that, and the biggest learning I've ever had is if you put a cost on team, you're never going to build a team. Team are the greatest investment you will ever make because that is leverage. You leverage through other people's wisdom. Like you all know you are great at some things and poor at others. And isn't it interesting, some of the things we might be poor at, let me give you a prime example. One of the things you might not be great at is picking up the phone to a prospect. What you might not be good at is either getting the inquiry, and, oh, no, you know, because you have all the money beliefs and rejection and all that rubbish, right? Okay, so you go, well, I can't afford to have anybody on the phone, but I've got 500 inquiries, but I'm not, I'm not calling them all. I'm only following them up, not even once. I'm missing some of them, right? Actually, you can't afford not to have that person. By having a person on the phone, how much would that make you and how much money are you leaving on the table? So very often people go, yeah, but I can't afford it. No, you can't afford not to because you, you, you're leaving so much on the table. If you're doing something that you're not great at, hire, hire someone who's great at that. You know, and this was for me, revel- I write, here's what I do. Top tip for you all. Write down everything that you love in your business and you're good at and everything that you're not good at or don't love, Right. And then all you do is you put it into pockets and go, right, what role is that? Who do I know who's great at that? Who do I know would love that? Or go and hire someone who's good at that. This single-handedly will change your whole business. Not, can I afford it? Uh, I don't know how to. That's all below the line, right? You'll know below above the line. Just below the line, it's excuses, it's denial, it's all that rubbish, right? Okay, blame, all that kind of stuff, right? You want to be above the line, right? You want to own it, all that kind of stuff. So once you live in that world, you can then start to recruit people. And what happens is, I've done this with so many people, right? When you do the hardest hire is your first hire, right? Because you go, oh, I can't have you sweating, right? The reality is that is just your fear. What you've got to do is step into that, hire someone. As long as you hire on their skill set, on their profile, you know that they're passionate about it. They love that role. In two weeks, you'll go, how the hell did I handle this business without them? Every single time. So you've got to hire early and you've got to remove the money blocker that I can't afford it and all that rubbish. They are the single greatest investment you ever make, you will ever make. And it's one of the most things I'm most passionate about. Be building a team. Remember, teams build dreams. And they allow you, for me, one of my biggest values is freedom, Deborah. And they allow you freedom. Now, once you then start to build your teams and you do it, you know, the right way, you then have a team that can grow it without you and you can do the things that you love. You can be more passionate. It creates more energy. 
But now you can, as you really build it out, you can grow your franchise companies or your schools or whatever you want to do. It is singly one of the greatest skills you can you can learn. And that's my that's one of my top tips. Yeah. And actually, we had an interesting conversation before we started, because um, just like I have the Dance Business Conference in the UK, Gordon runs an, another highly successful event, very similar for the martial arts business. And in fact, that's coming up for you this weekend. Mm-hmm. And I was busy saying before we started, how is it going? You know, how are you holding out? Like just remembering what I was like this year um, with my very small team that I put together to help me. And Gordon's like, oh yeah, I've got that thing this weekend. It's like, it's all taken care of. It's all happening. I don't really know. I just show up and I do it and I enjoy it and then I go away again (laughs) because he's got such an amazing team that are doing all these things for him. And here's the thing. If Gordon was doing all of the things and was highly involved with hours and hours and hours going into it, how is he out growing his franchise? How is he out serving his mastermind clients? How is he out making sure his schools are still highly performing? Like you can't restrict yourself by being amazing at this thing and doing all the work because look at what other amazing things you could all be doing if you weren't highly focused in the one area because you're not like outsourcing to other people. One of the things I want to add here before we move on from this, very simple, and this is really important. A lot of people frame it in the wrong way. That's how I need to step back from the business and it's disempowering. No, you need to step up. Building a team and letting go is about stepping up, not back. Step up, not back. Very empowering for your mind. That was massive for me when I had that epiphany. I'm not stepping back, I'm stepping up. And you step up so that you can now teach through people. One of the single greatest loves of mine is my team. Like for me, they are everything. They have the limelight. They have the recognition. They, it's, their, it's them, not me. None of it's me. It's them. I give them all the limelight because I used to be a person that needed the attention, that needed the recognition, that needed it all. But now it's all about my team. And nothing gives me greater pleasure than to, to help and evolve human beings. So, yeah, mm-hmm. I love that. I love doing that. Lovely. I love it. And, I mean, in terms of a very different subject now, um, attraction, you mentioned being really passionate about Facebook ads. Um, would that is that your number one go to when you're trying to attract and help people to grow their schools? Um, initially, yeah. So when we launch franchises, we'll just get on social media. I mean, it's you know we pay to play. You know, we've got a good system in place. You know, we'll you know our one of our first franchises we launched this year. They turned over ten thousand pounds in the first four weeks, which was pretty impressive. Um, and we launch via Facebook ads. You know, we'll normally launch 50 members in four to six weeks from a standing start. Facebook has got a nice little system or through social um, social media, but paid. So like I'm one of these things, you can do it organic or just pay and get there quicker. Do you know what I mean? As long as you know your data and your metrics, you're going to get there a lot quicker. So, you know, Facebook ads is very powerful um, for that. But then it's the other things. It's having your referral marketing locked and loaded. People don't do this right. They'll go, well, I, yeah, I, I asked them or I give them a, here's the worst one. I give them a flyer. Like that flyer is ending up in their bin. They probably wipe their nose on it. The kids have lost it. It's a great, it's what people do, right? Uh, but they don't have a digital referring strategy. We use a digital referring strategy, very simple, very powerful. Um, but making sure that we are on, like, it's very simple, effective, but we're having, you know, we're, you know, uh, your members love you. So, yes, digital, uh, your digital marketing is important, but there's nothing better than word of mouth. And you make it super simple for them, they will refer for you if it's simple. That's why we use a digital strategy, you yeah, know, uh, which works really well. So, so yeah, I, I think you've got to, but the thing is, social media is where it's at. Um you know, Facebook, Instagram, and what you want to do is dominate your area. One of the little things I want to teach you here, guys, very simple. People may or may not do this. They do their posts on their page, but they don't necessarily boost their content. And what I mean by that is if you, like people in the UK do not like to be sold. They hate it. They hate being sold to. But if you educate them, it's different. So I would definitely look at, spending little bits of money 
sharing your wonderful video testimony or the classes or the live video and just spend a bit of money locally. So all of, this is how we build, right? So all of a sudden you can go from nothing to like you dominate the area, not from selling by sharing. Massively different. So yes, you can do it organi get organically, but it's not as powerful and you don't get there very quickly, but you can reach thousands of people with a very small amount of uh, spend on Facebook. But now people go, they see a live video, then they see a post and a picture and they see a video testimonial. Then they see your live video again and they keep seeing, they don't be sold. There's no call to action, no CTA, none of that. It's like normal social posting. They go, I just keep seeing, yeah, that dance school down there. Yeah, I keep seeing them. So that's proper awareness marketing. And then you can just go and retarget them with some ads and away you go. So that's kind of a little strategy there that works very well if you want to, you know, get, get, get into the heart of people's minds because... Here's the thing, it takes about 100 times of people seeing you to actually engage. People don't get this now. We are ob so absorbed with information that we think, don't we, that we'll get seen once or twice. No, and some people say seven times. It's not. Billy Jean, I remember seeing him in um, one of the greatest marketers alive. You think he's brilliant, right? He makes 100 times minimum for people to actually take action. So if you're not getting the enough contacts, enough inquiries, because you're not getting enough attention. If you're not getting enough attention, you need to be out there more and reach more people. So yeah, that's my strategy on that. And then when you get them in, now you work on referrals. So it's dead simple, right? If you've got that licked, you're in. Yeah, hundred percent. And then once you've got them in, we need to keep them. So then we're into retention. Mm -hmm. Wow, retention for me, let me say this, retention is education. It's very simple. The reason most people leave you, whether it's a dance school, martial arts school, whatever, is because they don't understand. We have a perception, we have too much assumption and presumption. We presume they understand. So we have something quite unique. We have a, 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 a member induction day for every new client. Every new person comes in, they, they, it's compulsory to attend, not this, well, you could, they have to attend. So if you run a dance school full-time facility, they can come down, we have it every week. They ha and that's that's where they get their kit. It's the only way they can get their kit, Deborah. They can't get their kit. They don't receive their kit until they've done their induction day. The parents turn up. They sit. It's like a, a celebration, but it's designed for one reason. We spend an hour, an hour and a half educating them on the journey, educating them on not allowing their kid to quit because quit. You know, you know, it creates a. Uh, a, a culture of quitting for their kids and they'll do it forever. And we want to create a culture of winning. We talk about how the, the exams work. We talk about how it all works. We talk about the gradings. We talk about um, uh, our pa birthday parties and how it all works and how they can refer. And we talk about our adult programs. Unbelievable. And they understand the customer journey. It's so empowering doing an induction day to all of the new bits every week. And for me, that helps massively with retention because now they get it, you know, they get it, they get the journey, they're not trying to work it out. Most people go, yeah, here's a membership brochure, have a read through, come on. You would know, you know as well as I do, what they're they gonna do, it's gonna be in their car and then they're gonna put it in the bin. So we get them in a room and essentially we share with them the welcome brochure but we talk it through and they ask questions and now they understand, they understand the journey, they understand what it takes to be a winner, they understand what it takes and very important. So that, and then of course, you know, retention is about attention, giving them attention, giving them, knowing their names, looking after them, giving the parents attention, you know, really important, basic stuff that we forget, you know, um, making sure they're rewarded and recognized. We have a, a customer journey, we have a retention tracker as well, which is quite cool. So we know at each point, every month they are achieving at some point, whether it's a life skill or whether it's a, you know, a, a grading or whether that is uh, their badge or whatever it is, they've got something to aim for. Um, adults included, right? Um, so, so yeah, retention is massively important, but the other thing is to get, you know, I don't know whether you, a lot of you will do kids, but I'm sure you have adult programs as well. And if you do, getting the parents involved, because now it's a family thing, very, very powerful for retention as well. So yeah, that's my little tips on that. I love that. I'm even making notes while we're doing that one. <laughs> 
<laughs> I actually really love the weekly induction days. I don't think that happens in our industry. And mm-hmm. I think that could be um a, I think that could be a, a really great strategy for us to look into. And you know, obviously it's not you. You don't have time to do this. You pay somebody that holds these sessions for the hour, hour and a half, however long they take. And you know, it's just a weekly thing. They come to that. Then they come to their class. I love uh, that idea. Yeah. I'm going to blow your mind. I run them. And the reason I run them is very simply, I don't run any of my business. It's fully managed. This is the whole opera. We've got 9,000 square foot martial arts facility here. It is a 600 plus member school here, right? It is absolutely runs on rails. Everything. I don't need to be, I can be away from here for a year and it will grow. But I'm there once a week delivering because it's a thousand pound task. It's a thousand pound connection. It is a, for me to be there and see the head guy, they're like, wow, they're so respectful. They're so, and they're blown away by the story. Does that make sense? And they're like, this is why I'm bringing my child. You know, no one else can do that. So I thought it's shocky there, but that's what I do. Yeah, that, I do that. And I, I love it. So I take that back, completely take that back. <laughs> well, they, they and, that and, but you're right to assume that. But it's, you know, but then when you explain it, you go, ah, that makes sense. Yeah, it does because it's a thousand pound task. Um, Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, I know I have people who don't run it themselves. uh, And then I say, well, when you run it and they go, yeah, actually it makes sense because I'm the owner. So yeah, bit of a share there. Yeah. Yeah. Fab. Thank you. So the last part of my system is the systems, Mm. which for me is the pivotal point where people that can either work on their business or in it, if you don't get the systems and your process is right and have the right software, you're going to spend your life working in your business and never forget to work on the bigger boardroom stuff. So um, what kind of systems advice do you give people? Yeah. First of all, this is one of the hardest things that I had to learn. Um, but I learned systems run businesses and people run the systems. I'm a people person. One of the things I used to struggle with was leadership management, not leadership, but I'm good at inspiring, but the leadership management side, I don't manage my businesses now, but, um, but when it came to it, it was like, Oh no, like, you know, they're not doing this. They're not doing that. But then it became personal. I realized this. No, no, no. The system, all they got to do is run the system. If they're not running the system, it's the system. It's them not running the system. So I was like, ah, that makes more sense. But also I was like, my system was my head. <laughs> like, so I know how to do that. So it's in their brain. I've got some great news for you all. You can leverage this magnificently. And I teach school owners this. The great news is if you're doing it all, that's the great news for now. And the reason being is if you just tweak this a little bit. So most people go, if I say, yeah, right, sit down and write a procedure. I'm sorry. Most people would rather burn their eyelids with acid. Like, no, most, unless you are a proper C profile, love that kind of like, right, that really procedure, but you're not going to do it. And most people are in eye profiles, good dance teachers, not saying that's exclusive, but they, they've got a certain profile or they're very nurturing S profile. So they're always like, you know, like they haven't got time or it's more important that people are more important. So I realized that actually, what can I do? And I always like, lo- love to leverage my time. So, okay, so I'm already doing it. So what I've got is this thing called a phone. So what I can do is I can press the record button and record myself doing it. You've got a screen capture. So if you're doing something online, you might as well record it while you're doing it. So you're doing it anyway. Um, and if you're making a sales call, record the sales call. Exactly how to do so, I guarantee now in the next 30 days, if you just stopped before you did it, recorded yourself, screen recorded yourself, uh, doing it, you would then have a system. Let me explain why. Because you can create a system now. Like if you go to Starbucks, Starbucks have this brilliant thing, right? So their ops manual is basically a small card thing, color-coded, and it has a barcode, a reader on it, a QR code. And if it's how to clean the toilet, they literally put their, uh, they put their phone over it and up pops a video on exactly how to clean the toilet. Like, how easy is that? So we're in this world where we think about these ops manuals of this big, like, you know, pro. we've moved away in a digital age. So you can record yourself. Now, the other thing you can use is something called Otter. So Otter is brilliant. You'll be driving your car, 
And when you drive your car, so instead of just driving your car, listening to whatever you listen to, you can literally write procedures with your voice. So as you're talking, it starts to type a Word document for you. <laughs> so it starts talking, so you can say step one, step two, step three, step four. And so you're driving from here to your dance studio and you've now done a procedure and then you can just take that Word document and get someone to edit it for you for a fiver and put it all nicely for you. Like that's what you can do. And the big thing with systems is, systems sound very overwhelming. So people don't even start them because they're like, I've got to do all them things. Start with one simple system and drive your car if that's your thing and talk it. Video yourself doing it, screen record yourself, do it once and then give yourself a massive pat on the back and celebrate. Now you'll be excited to do it again. Then pick the next thing. Now I'm going to do one thing and I'm going to do it again. And I'm going to celebrate and I'm going to tell everyone and I'm going to do the next thing. The worst thing with systems is looking at all the systems I've got to create because it creates overwhelm and it creates procrastination and it creates literally you just do nothing, right? So my top tip for you is to do one system and celebrate. And then outsource it. (laughs) Yeah, you don't need to do it. You know, it's so simple. And I think, you know, with all these things, we can overcomplicate it or just simplify it. I'm a, I'm a simple person. I'm a simplicity guy. I think that the world is full of, you know, complications and, you know, people complicate simplicity. They complicate life. You complicate your business. Your business is super simple. Running a dance goal is super simple. And if you believe it in here, if you look at your business in the simplest form, in the simplest way, and you make it just make it simple, it will be simple because the best businesses in the world are simple. They're not complex. Mm, love it. Really love it. And um, for those of you that are really enjoying this podcast today, I'm really pleased to tell you that Gordon has very kindly offered to come and see us all. So at the Dance Business Conference next year in Birmingham, he will be coming and opening day two for us, which of course is what you did for us this year. And the reason you're coming back is because everybody requested, can we please have a bit more Gordon? (laughs) <laughs> and we it is just so you know i'm sure that's so lovely for you to hear but um we are we're really looking forward to having you back then um and just bringing some of your energy and your joy and your passion for life which you know just seeps out of you and we we love to just have a little bit of so yeah we can't wait for you to be there i'm very excited about coming back. i love the event by the way so it's truly magnificent if you've not been to Dance Business Lab, I've run events for years now, is a phenomenal first event. It'll be even better next year for sure. I thought, uh, Deborah, you did an absolutely amazing job with that event. I was I was shocked at how good it was. And I didn't mean that derogatory. I don't, because I know it was very like there was lots of because it was your first one. It was and when I say shocked, I was like, whoa, it took me back. I was like, well done, Deborah, brilliant. So and that is a massive compliment because it was like, whoa, it 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 surprised me in a really good way. So you did amazingly well with that. It'll be phenomenal next year. And uh, thank you for having me back. Can't wait. No, I'm very excited for next year and in particular because we get to touch so many more people's lives, which is what it's all about, going back to how we started the podcast. Um, Gordon, before we finish, I love to do just a fun little throw things at you, answer them as quickly as you can. Most people are rubbish at this, by the way. I say quick fire replies and they they love to go into detail. So I'm going to challenge you to have quick answers to my quick questions to finish off with a bit of fun. So are you ready? Yeah, born ready. Okay. Born ready. <laughs> Favorite business book? Life Leverage. By Life Leverage by Rob Moore. By Rob Moore. Okay. But a person from history no longer with us that you'd love to spend 15 minutes with. Bruce Lee. <laughs> uh, someone that you'd love to spend 15 minutes with that's still alive. Hey, Favorite mountain view? Mm. I don't know what that means, but mm. favorite mountain view. Somewhere you stood, appreciated the view and life, and sticks in your mind. I 
my the other day which was a park that I stood in where the mist was going. So, yeah, my, my local park, believe it or not, it was unbelievable, yeah. Gorgeous. And you can keep visiting there as well. Um, where you are at your happiness, happiest? Giving to others. And final question, what would you love to look back and leave as your legacy? Help, help every human being smile more inside. Mm, that's just delicious, delicious. And I know this is a very big vision you shared with me recently. And I have absolutely no doubt that this is going to be achieved. And this podcast has been just one of those tiny little drops in the ocean where you have reached a few more people. So on that note, I'd just love to say thank you so much. It's been amazing hanging out with you. I feel like we could do a whole series of podcasts, (laughs) (laughs) but I can't keep you all to myself. So um, I'll let you go forth and share yourself with the rest of the world. Gordon, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure. Take care. Thanks for having me then. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Are you looking to get precious time back in your life so you can make more time doing the things you love? DanceBiz is a class management and booking software from the lovely folk at Think Smart that will automate and streamline all your dance school admin. It's the perfect tool for all those tasks that just seem to take so long and will help you to work smarter, not harder. Message me today, folks, and I can give you a code so you can get two months free.